percent is predicted in less than 40 years of age group. It does not only have social, mental, but also significant financial burden. And if you look at the finances, just our Western data, more than hundreds of billions of dollars per year are lost because of wages or productivity. And that's why back pain is a significant and if you know the most common musculoskeletal problem present in our present to present our OPD. And when we look at back pain, now the thought process has changed from back pain as a symptom to back pain as a disease because it has a distinct pathophysiology and that is why we must know about back pain. I'm Dr. Harshal and I'm gonna just talk about a simple basic for the back pain. The talk is gonna include general spinal anatomy and the concept of a function unit, the back pain as an enigma, which what we should look for, what we should examine for, what are the pain generators in low back, what is the chemical or biochemical basis of the back pain, rules of investigation and a diagnostician's perspective one last slide, which what I do in my OPD. So spine is a complex balanced structure comprising of 33 vertebrae. So 23 discs and more than 139 joints. It uh, protects uh, spinal cord and gives us 31 pairs of spinal nerves. Now when we look at the spine, it is not just a, a, a balanced structure which allows us to have a bipedal uh, movement or mobilization, gives us free two hands to have a functional or chirurgical work, but also it has significant amount of flexibility. The flexibility is given by dynamic stabilization of the spine, the four core group of muscles in the paravertebral uh, region, and they're supplemented by uh, supporting muscles in the neck, which are scapulothoracic and trapezius muscle, and the truncal muscles in the low back. The functional anatomy, the functional anatomy of the uh, functional unit of the spine is two uh, adjoining uh, vertebrae with their end plates, uh, this in, in between which actually uh, takes care of the compressive loads by os uh, osmotic compression and uh, the facet joint between two vertebra. And this is a function unit which gets loaded day in and day out. If you look at the numbers there, the 70% of the load is borne by the anterior structures and the 30% of the load in the normal physiological loading is borne by the posterior structures. And the region anatomy differs from cervical, thoracic to uh, lumbar region and it has its own importance when we are dealing with the causation of the back pain, as well as also treatment when we offer uh, to any back pain patients. As for any uh, history taking, pain has to be taken seriously, and pain has to be uh, the history has to be taken methodically. And we know all the uh, Socrates site, onset, duration, uh, the uh, aggravating factors, relieving factors, severity, and that Socrates history remains important. The age, the sex. The socioeconomic status, everything has its own importance. But when we come to back pain per se, we have to talk about these few salient points which we have to know. Spinal or non-spinal, acute or chronic, axial or appendicular. If appendicular, whether it is local, referred, radicular or chronical. And there are some special mentions which need to be uh, looked into back pain. We'll go one, one by one in each. So then about spinal versus non-spinal. There is something called a spinal masqueraders as spine has a proximity of all, almost all the visceral organs. And also, uh, many musculoskeletal causes can also mimic a spinal pain. And uh, why we should know about it is because some of the differential diagnoses like erotic dissection, uh, acute pancreatitis, or penetrating ulcers can be surgical or medical emergencies. And if not, if missed, they can have a disastrous consequences. Uh, going to more than 12 weeks. But now, because the back pain is considered as a disease per se and not as a symptom, the concept of chronic back pain has come to any back pain which doesn't get better during the expected time. And that is what we call as chronic back pain. And it has become a significant uh, thought process. Uh, the thought process has evolved over a period of time with regards to pain generator, chemical study, uh, uh, chemical studies regarding the pain uh, to offer a better solution to the patient. The causes of acute back pain can be uh, general annular tears, muscle sprains, facial sprains, SI joint sprains, and the chronic back pain typically is a degenerative process which leads to a chronic back pain which lasts for many decades. Coming to uh, axial versus radicular, uh, axial versus appendicular, the axial back pain, the neck pain, the uh, middle, middle back pain or the uh, low back pain are typically the process of spondylosis or uh, general degeneration of the back and also the uh, in four uh, classical things we should look for is the local cause. 
any joint, any uh, local muscle pathology, any referred pain that, that pain can come from visceral regions in the neck or the uh, mid back, or uh, that, that can also come from facet joints and the local problems in the low, uh, low back. Radicular component is typically uh, because of the compression of a spinal nerve, uh, which in the neck can be, can be because of the disc prolapse in the cervical region, and the low back can be because of the disc prolapse in the lumbar region, and the claudical pain. So we look at the, uh, so this is an example, uh, classically the nerve which is involved, the distribution of the pain will be along the course of that nerve. You can also have something called as radiculopathy, which involves affection of sensory or motor fibers, and that also has its own uh, distribution. And coming to claudic uh, referred pains, the referred pains from the facial region in the cervical as well as in the, uh, the lumbar region can have their own specific demarcations, but these are more or less gross and the facility pain typically is a uh, understanding of pain uh, depends uh, upon the whether pain is because of the hyperextension, the old age, uh, pain which is because of the lateral flexion or rotations and these kind of pains are uh, common in uh, elderly population. And the chronic pain which affects uh, significantly has an impact on the disability in an older age group. We should know about the uh, classical uh, differentiation between vascular claudication and neurogenic claudication. The vascular Typically, they have uh, absent of back pain. The direction is uh, retrograde, the distal to proximal. They typically get activated on walking, uh, relieved on standing, which as opposed to uh, spinal claudication or neurogenic claudication, the walking as well as standing both activate the problem and sitting or lying down relieves the symptoms. And also, this distal pulsations is an important factor, which is uh, absent in uh, vascular claudication, whereas present in neurogenic claudication and neurological examination. More often than not, you will have some of the other uh, weakness or sensory changes in uh, neurogenic claudication. And a special mention to uh, metabolic pains, inflammatory pains, instability pains, and uh, neoplastic pains. Typically, uh, when we talk about spinal pains, they are mechanical in origin. Mechanical means they uh, get worsen on activity and they get relieved on rest, a simple uh, day to day definition. Uh, but when you have a non mechanical pain, you should always look for a non spinal origin or something called as metabolic pains or inflammatory pains. Because inflammatory pains, they, are, they get better when you uh, do activities and they get worse when you have a prolonged period of rest. Uh, and also, uh, very commonly, you can have some tumors or infections which can lead to uh, pain which actually affects the change of posture. So that's typically termed as instability pain. Examination, the purpose is mainly to rule out the associated conditions and uh, non-spinal causes to localize the spinal level and extent, to have a uh, to assess the neurogenic status and more often than we will be able to prognosticate if there is a significant nerve involvement, uh, we can give a we give patient an answer what we are going to offer him and how much uh, be, be, uh, benefit he can have. The normal uh, protocol or the uh, flow chart of examination you must follow, but typical mention should be given to movements, provocative maneuvers and neurology. So provocative maneuvers in cervical spine as well as lumbar spine are to assess whether there is an affection of a nerve and neurology is mainly uh, to localize the levels. In the lumbar region we have a fixed chart whether we, whichever the nerve involved we have uh, specific dermatomes and myotomes which can assess the level for the uh, spinal phase and for same as for the cervical region. One must also remember there are something called as bottle signs or non-organic pains and uh, we are going to talk about the yellow flags uh, in the coming slides but uh, Non-organic pains are typically the pains which uh, patients, we can call them malingering or they can have some non-organic origin but they have some benefit along, along with it and uh, superficial tenderness or non-anatomical non tenderness or the maneuvers which are not supposed to cause pain but you get, uh, you get, uh, you get pain because of that, a radicular pain because of that and uh, over verbalization and uh, non regional pains are typically the uh, telltale signs of a non-organic pain. Coming to red flags and yellow flags, red flags are those symptoms which indicate a serious spinal pathology, typically the thoracic pains, fever or unexpected weight loss, ball and bladder dysfunction, sexual dysfunction, history of any tumor or carcinoma, uh, chronic debilitating medical illnesses, progressive neurological deficit, a disturbed gait or saddle anesthesia, and age of onset, uh, which is not expected. The mechanical age, mechanical pains typically happen between 20 to 60, but if you have age of onset before 20 or beyond 60s, then uh, we should look for any red flags because those are social and financial problems as well as compensation issues.
What are the pain generators? So, a uh, lot of studies and a lot of research is happening on in this field. So, there's a nociceptor uh, receptors which actually have a pathway which uh, goes to second order neuron to uh, somatosensory and anterior cingulate cortices, which gives a sensory discrimination and affective cognitive uh, factors to the pain. And a uh, chronic pain actually centrally sensitizes the patient for a uh, for a normal uh, simple stimulus to have a painful stimuli and uh, that is very common in chronic pains, allodynias and fibromyalgias. So a nerve root compression or a nerve root affection can give us a radicular pain or a radiculopathy. Radicular pain is typically just the pain. A radiculopathy is also an affection of a motor sensory involvement. It can be or may not be associated with pain. The facet joint is one of the important factors and uh, we talked about facetogenic pains. Uh, age, previous history of low back pain, normal gait, maximal pain when uh, there is a hyper extension and uh, absence of provocative maneuvers are typically the uh, uh, telltale signs of a facetogenic pain and uh, as opposed to uh, again SI joint can be involved, uh, disc, uh, there is a lot of research upon uh, why disc, leaves, uh, disc degeneration happens, uh, there are low grade infections, nerve growth in the discs, inflammatory cascades all have been uh, proposed but uh, there is no uh, fixed pathological cause for a disc leading to a degeneration and uh, again the pain the, uh, sensations can be from through annulus and ligaments and fascia. Chemical basis uh, we must know because we give a lot of medicines and we have uh, had a uh, good discussion on inflammatory cascades and uh, also the uh, increased uh, depolarization and the effect of neuroleptic drugs on the back pain. So, so we should know about the uh, chemical base of neuropathic and I am not going to go into details of that. It's a separate topic in itself. Investigations are typically uh, what we offer, what I do in my opening, my first time investigations, whether I decide whether to investigate or not investigate. And if investigate, MRI and uh, X-rays are the first time investigation. The second investigation are typically the dynamic X-rays, CTs and SNSA workup as and when required. And also uh, metabolic workups. Uh, a bone density test and uh, EMG, NC and SSCPs as and when required. And uh, there is a separate discussion on uh, radiology uh, or separate workshops, so I am not going to go into details of that. So this is uh, what I do in my OPD when I have a patient with back pain. I try to categorize them into a disc degeneration or spondylosis, spondylosis type of uh, group, a nerve compression type of a group or a nerve dysfunction type of a group. Uh, whenever a back pain patient comes, I look forward that there is any telltale signs of a non-spinal pain. If no, uh, good, I go ahead. If there is a spinal pain, I look for axial versus appendicular. If it is appendicular, whether it is radicular, referred or chronicate. And when it is axial alone, we look for mechanical pains, which can be discogenic, uh, which increases on uh, increased abdominal pressure, coughing, sneezing, bending forwards. The movements are significantly painful. Uh, Festogenic pain, which is uh, a total entity in itself. Instability pain, which can happen because of the uh, instability, a transitional instability in the back, or can also happen with the uh, osteoporotic fractures in the low back, which are common in elderly population. Special scenarios, if at, if at all, there, which are not uh, falling into any specific categories, then metabolic, inflammatory, and neuroplastic. And then I examine, I examine them for provocative science, neurology, water science, and range of motion. And then I decide whether to investigate or not investigate. Thank you.